out here again for Rito Lab with the pups because it's beautiful weather. Hopefully they don't start barking while I'm reading again. So, chapter 29. That was nice of you, Florida, Andrew says, winking. It's my favorite thing he does, that wink. But right now I'm grateful he doesn't know that. I don't know what you're talking about, I say, fighting off a smile. Nina lifts the camera off her head and looks down at the floor for a moment. He's scared of this stuff. He'll never admit it, but he is. That's why I try not to get mad at him for making fun of my cemetery and ghost research. I think he does it because it makes him nervous. Well, it makes me nervous, too. The only difference is that I don't have a choice. My reading lamp flickers again, and the small hairs on my back of my neck rise. The electricity Inez creates is pulsing just under my skin again. She's trying to tell me something. I just don't know what. I reach back and rub my neck, trying to ease the feeling. If Andrew and Nina can feel it, too, they sure don't show it. Nina gasps and we turn to look at her. Her face is tilted down toward the sc screen of her camera. Oh. My. What in the- This can't be good. Andrew and I crowd around her, craning our necks to see the small screen. She hits the pause button and looks to turn back at us, her eyes wild and frightened. I'm going to rewind this so you can see it, but Tessa, I don't want you to panic, okay? Panic? Why would I panic? It's not like a ghost has made a return- ventriloquist dummy cry actual tears and left mysterious drawings hanging inside my wall and held my hand in a graveyard or anything. <sighs> I'm fine. Show me. With a few more taps, she's rewound the video she just took and begins playing it back in slow motion. It begins with me crouching down and searching underneath my bed. Yes, I remember doing that. The footage rolls by slowly. I watch myself straighten back up and in that instant, a flash of lightning brightens the entire room. There! Nina screams, her index finger jabbing frantically at the mirror over my dresser in the video. I squint hard and gasp as I finally see what got her so wound up. It's a face. A small, very young, very little girlish face that is reflected in the mirror. I bring a hand to my mouth to keep horrible four-letter words from spilling out. Unlike the soft smile on the statue of Ina's Clark, this face is dark, frightening. Pitch black eyes like the night are set against the porcelain skin and her lips are pale. She doesn't look happy. She doesn't look alive. Oh my gosh, I say, pushing the camera away. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't need to see it anymore. Because the image of that ghostly face is going to be forever burned into my mind. My entire body trembles with the thought that she was in here with me. With us. Andrew scrunches up his face and sits down on my bed. I don't get it. There was no one in this room with us. No one. Remember... There was no one in the cemetery with us either, remember? The footprints? I remind him. Footprints? Nina asks. What are you talking about? Right before the statue disappeared, there was a strong breeze. It blew my hood up over my face so I couldn't see, but when I pulled it back off and looked around, there were footprints in the ground. Little footprints. They weren't there before, Nina. We would have seen them. Nina scribbles frantically in her journal. I can't believe you guys forgot to tell me this. It could have been there before we arrived. Andrew asserts, but this time he doesn't sound convinced. And about this, he waves his hand at Nina's camera, a reflection doesn't happen unless there's someone in front of the mirror to create it. That can't be true. I just showed you evidence that it isn't. Nina responds flatly. Instead of being afraid, she sounds determined. Was that the first time you've seen her, Tessa? I nod numbly. I've seen signs of her, but I've never seen Inez herself until today. Andrew laughs nervously. Well, I'm a believer now, and I think she's starting to get impatient with us. Paranormal activity can become extreme, Nina says. There are documented cases of fires starting on their own and houses caving in on themselves. Houses caving in on themselves? I've never gotten the feeling that the ghost haunting me is that angry, but maybe I'm wrong. Either way, I don't want to test her. The front door slams, sucking the air right out of my lungs. Mom and Dad are back, and my computer napping chance is gone. Ugh. Oh no. I press the heels of my palms into my eyes until I see spots. They're back. My parents are back. Nina pats my shoulder. Hey, it's all good. I was kind of excited to meet them anyway. Her dad's cool, Andrew says, covered in pizza sauce, but cool. I'd laugh if I weren't so frustrated. It's not that. It's just the deep somber notes of my dad's violin drift up the stairwell, interrupting me. For the first time I can remember, it isn't calming. Are you going to tell them about this? Andrew says, nudging my door open a bit farther with his foot. The sound of the strings intensifies and my head is suddenly killing me. Tessa, is something wrong? 
Tina asked, unzipping her GoPro case to put the camera away. Thank goodness. If I'm about to have some kind of weird nervous breakdown, I don't want it to be caught on video. No, well maybe, but you have to promise you guys won't think I'm weird or anything if I tell you. I say, they have to understand this. I need them to. Andrew snorts wildly and jabs a finger out toward her. She's got a camera strapped to her head, Tessa, and you're worried that you might look weird? Nina reaches to slap him, but he slides away quickly, laughing. I wish I could laugh with them. It's just too difficult right now. I swallow hard and get ready to tell them how backward the Woodward family really is. I can't tell my parents about this because they're a little, uh, laid back about stuff. They won't take it very seriously. Have you tried? Andrew asks. I shake my head no. They just have a lot of other stuff going on and... I trail off, trying to decide how exactly I want to explain this to them. I guess I want to solve this myself, with you guys. For some reason, I just feel like that's what's supposed to happen. And trust your heart, Nina says quietly. We won't tell them anything yet, but if things get worse or the ghost starts hurting you, you'll have to tell them. No questions asked. Andrew finishes for her. His expression is pained, and I can't help but wonder if he's worried for me. I close my eyes and let Dad's violin fill my ears. It's time to get to the bottom of things, but there's no way to do it unless I'm honest with them, and they deserve it. One more thing. I don't have a laptop. Or a phone. I blurt out. Embarrassment floods me, and I look down at the worn rug on my floor. It's got gnarled edges, and it's losing its color. Okay, so why did you say we could come up here to use the computer? Andrew asks. His tone isn't sarcastic or mean. It's just Andrew. I sigh. We do have a family computer, but it's only used for paying bills and homework and stuff like that. But now that my parents are back, I don't have a chance of using it without them noticing. Sorry, guys. What are you sorry about? Andrew asks. That you don't have your own computer? Or that you tried to hide it from us? I wasn't hiding it. Not exactly. Nina waggles her eyebrows at me. Right. And Andrew doesn't like Doritos. Fine. I laugh. I'm sorry. I don't have my own computer. And I'm sorry I tried to hide it. I should have known I can't hand hide anything from you lunatics no you should have known you don't need to hide anything from us lunatics andrew corrects a sympathetic smile on his face got it got it good because we've got work to do andrew spins me toward my mirrored closet door my startled reflection stares back at me look there that's the face of a girl who's going to solve the biggest ghost mystery chicago has ever seen computer or no computer he claps me on the shoulder and scoots up his backpack where are we going? I ask, scrambling for my shoes and jacket. Andrew smirks. You'll see. I snatch a sheet of paper out of my drawer and scribble out a note to Bomb about our supplies. Knowing her, she's probably taking Jonah to his room to get him changed into dry clothes after the rain. I'll just drop this on the counter when she's not looking, or she'll find it later and stop worrying. Doing it now might get us stuck here with the adventure jar in Reno for the night, and I can't afford that. Not when it feels like we're so close to some answers. Getting good. Next chapter tomorrow.